Okay, and then Matthew twenty five fifteen. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one to uh, to each according to his own ability. The his Lord said to him. Now later when they come back to the he said to the good servant, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And then the servant who has buried the talent he said and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So here, there is promise of grace that the master will say to him, well done, good and faithful servant. So that's the promise of, the pr uh, promise of reward that God, uh, God recognized them. And to be good and faithful servant. And actually the first blessing, the first grace is that God give us the talents. God give us the ability to serve God. God give us different kinds of ability to do things. And then when we follow God's plan, then God will say to us, God recognizes what we do and say, you're well done, you're good and faithful servant. And then you are faithful over a few things, even though we are not faithful over all the things, but we want to be faithful over more things. And then God is very happy. I will make you ruler over many things and enter into the joy of the Lord. So in heaven too, there will be uh, Christians who are assigned rulership over other Christians. So they will rule over many things. And they can also enter the joy of the Lord that in heaven, heaven is full of joy, full of all kinds of blessings, full of love and all kinds of blessings. That is grace. And then there is the law. There is a law. Cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there will be punishment for this servant. But, and that is eternal punishment. That is hell. But we should not be motivated only by this and say, if I don't serve God, I can enter hell. But we should be saying, oh, God has given me the ability to serve Him. And then when I serve Him, He will say, you're a good and faithful servant. And He will uh, give us reward in heaven that we can rule over many things. And He will give us joy. And He, can, he, he will also give us reward in this life that Jesus has said that. You know, he who has forsaken different things for Him, you will receive a hundredfold in this life. Okay, the outline. Now, I, I, I say this again. I want you to write outlines for your message. Because if you don't have an outline, then you go astray. You go to different directions. I want you to have outlines to guide yourself. And then when you give me the message, put a point. Point number one and ex explain it. And point number two and explain it. Okay, first, God gives talents and ability and motivation to use these talents for God. So it's God who gives us the talents, the ability, and the ability and the motivation. He gives us the ability to use the talents and the motivation that we all have this motivation to serve God is from God. That give us that God give us this ability and the motivation. And then when God converts us, He gives us a new nature that wants to use its talents. So when we are born again, we receive the nature and the motivation to serve God and to glorify God. But some people use lies to deny this. They will say, well, I just want to be saved. I just want to believe in Jesus. I don't want to serve God. I just want to believe in Jesus so I can go to heaven. Now, the Bible doesn't say it like this. In the judgment passages, it's, as, I, as we see in Matthew 25, it's according to what we do. If we bury the talents, then we don't enter eternal life but we enter the outer darkness where there will be and the gnashing of the teeth and those who don't do it to the to jesus little brothers they will enter hell so there is no choice we must use our talents and serve god but we don't do it out of pressure that's my main point we don't just say I have to serve God, if not, I go to hell. Then, then we are serving like slaves. The slaves, if they don't serve, then they have to be beaten. 
we don't we shouldn't be like this we should be like children i'm happy to serve god my father because everything i do for him he's very happy he'll reward me and he'll give me more strength he'll help me to bless more people and he'll reward me in his life and in the future so that should be our main motivation so when we talk about the motivation it's always what god does for us it's not what we do so we don't say we're motivated to serve God because we have to do it. That's, that's the law, not, not because of that, but because when we do it, God is very happy and He for sure blesses us and rewards us. So it's God who gives us the talents and He converts us. When we convert us, He gives us a new nature that wants to use His talents. And then when we use our talents for God, God will appreciate and reward us. So God will say you're a good and faithful servant and He'll reward us. And when Christians don't use the talents at all, they have to face judgment. So this is the law. So when people don't, don't use the talents, then they have to face judgment. And then how? So it's very important to have how. Now here the outline is a little different. That is God who gave us the talents. God gave us the new nature to serve Him. And then when we serve Him, now these are all grace. One, two, three. One, two, three is, uh, they're all grace. God gave us talents and ability, the motivation to, to use our talents. And God gave us a new nature that we want to use His talents. And when we use the talents for God, God will appreciate and reward us. And this is the law. The punishment the, now the law is not only punishment the law also tell us what to do so when the uh, master tell the servants to use them that is also the law tell them to use the talents that is the law it's his reward his acknowledgement of us that is the grace okay that is what God does to us to bless us that the law is what does to us to tell us what to do that is the law. God tell us what to do. That is the law. So not everything God does to us is grace. God also gives us the law. But grace and law are not enemies. We must understand this. There is a how we can match these two together. We live in the grace of God. We are saved by grace through faith. Our whole life we, are, we enjoy God because of His grace. And that grace will motivate us to serve God. That is the law. And then when we serve God, God will reward us. That is grace. So the two should be together and they are not enemies of each other. So as Christians, we have the new life from God. That is grace. He give us talents. He give us opportunities. He give us our resource and uh, everything we need to serve God. That, those are the those are the grace and he gave us talents to serve God and then when we serve God that is the law when we serve God then God remembers it then it's grace God will remember it and he will reward us and he'll give us more strength and he'll raise us up to a high level that is grace so please understand the difference between law and grace law is what we do what we have to obey grace is what God would do to us to bless us to give us good things, to give us reward and give us provision. And of course, most importantly, give us eternal life, salvation. Give us the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us and, and strengthen us. So the two are not enemies. We live in God's grace and His law. We live in God's grace and His law. It just, God's law tells us what to do, but it's God's grace that gives us strength and motivation to obey Him. The law does give us motivation, but that is a minor motivation to remind us of the punishment, remind us of our responsibilities. That is the law. But we should not be mainly motivated by the law. So the law is not bad. The law is good. But the law is not our main, main motivation. It's like in a family. Doing the house chores is not bad. It is necessary. The main thing is, the motivation is not just saying, because I'm married 
uh, therefore I have to wash dishes, therefore I have to do this, therefore every day I have to do this, then it's always living in the law. But in a family it will be like this. My spouse is nice to me and we can enjoy each other, we can strengthen each other, we enjoy each other, and I'm happy to, to bless my spouse. That is, uh, you know, that give us the motivation to uh, bless our, bow, uh, our, our spouse, to be nice to them, to help them. So the motivation is because the spouse has been nice to us and and the family is a gift from God, so I want to keep this so the family as a gift is grace. And, and when we love God, when we love the family, God is very happy and He reward us. That is grace. Okay? So if you have a question, please uh, send the questions to me. And I want everyone to do the assignment to show that you understand it. And you, if you don't understand, I'll tell you how to change and then you can work on it. And then God, then you can improve. Then your people, you know, imagine all your members, they say, God is so wonderful. I enjoy God. I like God. So I hope you will always preach like this. God is wonderful. God is nice. He has been nice to us. He blesses us. He wants to strengthen us. And what, whatever we do for God, God is very happy. And He will give us more strength to serve Him. And He will reward us. And He remembers everything we do. And He gives us more resources so that we can do more for God. So we can motivate each other with God's grace. Okay, and then... Five, how we can start to use our talents, okay? So how? First, we appreciate God for all the talents He has given us, all the gifts, spiritual gifts. And then uh, we'll, we receive training. As pastors, we give training to the members. As members, the members will receive training. And then we practice doing it. And then there should be supervision. The pastor can see how the people are doing it, whether they're doing it correctly, and tell them how to do it correctly. Just like now, I'm encouraging you how to write better messages so that you can learn from it, so that you can improve in your, in your preaching, so that you can motivate people to love God and serve God and, and enjoy God. So we, we train them, we give them the opportunities to serve God. We appreciate them. We uh, give them more responsibilities as time goes on, but not to give them pressure, but to appreciate everything they do. That's how we can use our talents and also motivate people to use talents. And then for the people who use talents, they can encourage themselves and say, everything I do for God, God remembers, and I have reward forever and ever. For eternity, I'll be rewarded. That is wonderful. It's not just a one-time reward. It's reward for eternity. Imagine that. Forever and ever we'll be rewarded by God. And also in this life, God will provide for us so that we have provision from God. So, so these are the, um, how we can use our talents. How we can be motivated to use our talents. And another thing to pay attention is that we always use the talents mainly to follow the Great Commission, to preach the gospel, to build up people's spiritual life, to build up the church so that the church can reach out to more people. So we always want to follow, follow uh, God's plan. The Great Commission is God's plan. 